Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us in gold fundamental and technical analysis. Hope you all had a brilliant week last week and if you didn't, don't worry, uh, this week will be a new week and hopefully you'll find uh, some profitable opportunities and take advantage. So getting into the week ahead, 4th of December in the United States, the focus will be on the highly anticipated US labour market report followed by jolts, job openings and the ISM services, PMIs and those are really um, quite important for uh, the US uh, economy you know, and, and GDP and uh, a country's GDP and where it is in its economic cycle is actually reflective of uh, what the currency is likely to do. So a currency will typically tend to depreciate <clears throat> if a um, an economy is going to a recession and if an economy is uh, growing in maybe the you know the expansion or the boom phase you'll see that the currency tends to appreciate this is due to you know supply and demand right so additionally preliminary readings of Michigan consumers uh, confidence factory orders and trade data will also offer insights into the economic landscape internationally monetary policy decisions are expected in Australia and Canada and um, I think both are actually expected to hold rates uh, while inflation will be closely watched in China and Switzerland. Um, GDP growth rates from Australia will also capture global attention. Furthermore, services PMI from China, that would be an important one for uh, global growth and whether China are recovering um, from their um, current economic uh, contraction, along with updates on industrial production and factory orders in Germany alongside Canada's IV Purchasing Managers Index, uh, will contribute to a comprehensive view of global economic activities. Additionally, attention will be on foreign trade data releases from Germany, Australia and China. So lots going on this week and uh, this week, this month is going to be a short month. Um, as we're pretty much at the end of the year, probably things start slowing down around the 19th, 20th. Uh, I think the last uh, central bank meetings are really around and I think it's Japan is maybe around the 19th or 20th. And then after that, uh, traders really start to um, unwind for the uh, for the year and uh, January will be when there's Typically, you know, volatility starts to pick up. But um, yeah, so if you want more information, by the way, go to tradingeconomics.com and click on the week ahead uh, tab. And if you are uh, in the uh, mentoring group, Trading 180 mentoring group, then you can go to the trading videos channel where I have a more detailed um a fundamental breakdown as well as the, some a much more detailed um, a technical breakdown in terms of you know trade opportunities levels etc uh, this video on the uh, YouTube is really just for uh, uh, for free and kind of just the, the, the summary so <clears throat> before we get into uh, the uh, the the uh, upcoming uh, fundamentals. I just wanted to kind of go over the uh, a trade update that um, we spoke about, and I, I was in last week. So this is something that I'm doing uh, week in week out in terms of um, trade updates, um, as well as uh, one winner and one loser that I've uh, I've had. If I had two losers, then I might go over two losers. If I go over, if I had two winners, then I might go over two winners. Right, but. Um, uh, this was a trade update from uh, from last week. So if you go to last week's weekly video, you'll see the breakdown of this trade that I had taken on um, on the Euro Swiss and the reasons why I'm bearish fundamentally on the Euro. Um, and I got in actually on this nice um, uh, candlestick right here, the two hour, <clears throat> which ended up being a really good trade. So um, uh, prices were going sideways for a little bit and actually, um, I must admit, I was thinking about exiting the trade. We were discussing this on uh, on Wednesday in the, in a group call, and uh, I did say then I would hold on to see uh, what the data was going to be with inflation because inflation came down um, and it did come down. Then I, I then. Basically, this would have been a, a hold. Reason being is because the central bank are less likely to be hawkish and um, inflation is coming down to their 2% target, inflation target. And so, the like I said, the uh, European Central Bank are less likely to hike, which should weaken the euro. So um, it was on the Wednesday, I think Wednesday's call, um, 
I was thinking to myself, let's uh, let's let's see what happens. And um, the data came out, and it was pretty supportive. So you can see inflation came out. Um, uh, you can see that the uh, actuals of uh, 3.4, the expected inflation uh, year on year. <clears throat> It was forecasted to come out as 2.7 from 2.9, um, but it actually came out as 2.4%. So you can see pretty much what happened. And so um, in the group, I ended up taking um, uh, some profits, part of uh, the majority of my profits off at the 50% area. So that was a decent trade from up here. And then I let 20% run um, to 80% of, uh, of the range. <clears throat> which actually it didn't my, my position didn't close immediately there and it bounced away from it so i thought oh my days what's going on here and then it eventually rolled over and hit my uh, the rest of my position so i'm actually out of that really nice trade um from the absolute highs managed to pick the highs on that and uh, got out at 80 percent so there's the trade update uh, Euro Swiss and uh, later on in this video I will go over uh, the uh, dollar CAD which ended up being a loser on the Friday as well as the Aussie Swiss uh, stop hunt so uh, stick around for that uh, if you want uh, my trade breakdown um, on those so let's get into the fundamentals for the week and some technicals so uh, dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength. And now uh, my bias is is still really to kind of look to, for buys on the uh, on the dollar. Although we came down this week, uh, the dollar index doesn't look too bad in terms of you know the last uh, couple of days. We have found a bit of uh, uh, demand down at these 102 round number um, prices didn't hold in this demand zone, so we can delete that. From an overall high and low, uh, the the, the uh, dollar was ex obviously expensive at the 107s, and it was a bargain at the 90 at the 99 area. We're just below fair value, probably somewhere like around the 61.8 percent fib uh, or 61.8 percent discount, um, and so this starts to look cheap to me. But there is some negative sentiment surrounding um, surrounding the dollar. Uh, their economy is slowing, just like all economies are slowing, by the way. So it's not just uh, exclusive to the U.S. economy that is um, uh, the economy is is kind of slowing down. And it says here Americans are finally turning frugal after splurging over the summer. So government data, retailer warnings indicate consumer pullback, further labor market cooling may put more pressure on spending so if the consumers stop spending then businesses um, aren't going to get their uh, their money and income and then that affects the economy right so it's put to kind of put it simplistically um, and then there was uh, Powell uh, said that he pushes back the Fed Chair Jerome Powell on rate cut bets but markets push back harder now um, again the, really the narrative fundamental narrative and sentiment narrative is, is that the uh, Federal Reserve are going to be cutting rates next year um, and the market is pricing that in based on what they think is uh, you know, the data uh, to date right? the economic data and the inflation data to date which is the reason why you're seeing the dollar kind of uh, sell off a bit and uh, there's some negative sentiment and Jerome Powell is basically pushing back and saying that um, you know uh, rate uh, cuts in the first half of the year uh, may not happen so just here it says Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell attempted to push back against investors growing expectations of interest rate cuts in the first first half of 2024 uh, Wall Street responded by doubling down on Friday despite Powell's warning that it would be premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved sufficient restrictive stance or to speculate on when policy might ease so it says markets now place odds of a quarter point uh, cut by the Federal Open Market Committee March meeting well above 50% and are fully pricing in a cut in May as traders viewed Powell's comments as sufficiently balanced to leave the door open for such a pivot that followed a round of manufacturing data earlier uh, on Friday adding to an other measures that signal growth is slowing so the market looks like they're pricing in rate cuts so there are reasons to definitely sell the dollar 100% and um, one of the things I'm saying to the group is that um, I'm definitely not married to the dollar and if data does support uh, um, shorting the dollar then I will do that but my bias really to kind of buy the dollar over certain currencies is that I don't think the dollar is 
the worst currency, right? So you can't look at the dollar in isolation. You can't say, oh, well, you know, this is what's happening to the dollar and not compare it to what's happening, for example, in Europe or in Canada, right? So although things might look bad in, in the US, um, are things worse in Europe or in another country? And then you make a judgment as to which one is the worst, and then you look to short the worst currency, right? So, yes, it looks the headlines look bad, <clears throat> but is the dollar the worst? No, I, in my opinion, it's not. But um, but let's see what happens. And and uh, and uh, yeah, uh, the dollar at the moment suffering from negative sentiments. So. Um, going back to the dollar index this week, I do think there could be a little bit of a bounce, I would say, um, if prices do come back down. You definitely want data to support, by the way, buying. So um, you can wait for some at least some decent data to come out uh, before looking to buy the uh, US dollar. But it does look like in the, uh, in the short term, any pullbacks to any uh, supply zones, so something around here, it looks like you could look for uh, short trades where we are right now. So that, you know the market could start to look like it wants to continue to uh, uh, make lower highs and lower lows. But um, uh, me, I'm still looking for uh, dollar uh, buys in in terms of uh, you know bargain hunting. So let's see uh, what happens with the dollar. There are reasons to buy and reasons to sell the dollar. So it's not. Um, uh, an all-out seller, an all-out buy. Uh, my bias is only slight uh, leaning towards, I guess, uh, more dollar buys. So I'm going to still look for some uh, dollar buy trades against, you know, certain currencies, not necessarily all currencies. Uh, dollar yen. So the dollar yen is pulled back again, just really kind of based on um, uh, dollar weakness. It's really not really yen strength, although there is. There are and there are rumors that the yen could start to adjust monetary policy uh, next year. And if they look like they are and the data does support that, then I will be a buyer of the yen. I think next year the yen is going to be a very, very good trade if the data proves it. And so um, there's there's actually talks that the yen could come all the way down to the one two twos i think it was uh, next year with dollar weakness and the uh, bank of japan being the only bank really that's hiking rates uh, or looking to potentially hike rates so not only will the yen strengthen or should the yen strengthen uh, against the dollar it should strengthen across the board while all other uh, currencies and the central banks are uh, cutting rates you'll and you start to see um, the uh, Bank of Japan hiking rate. So there's a massive divergence there um, on the horizon. So um, I'll draw the uh, demand zone from maybe around here. So uh, with that being said, I do think that any levels to look for uh, trading opportunities to the uh, upside in terms of buying the dollar are probably starting around now and maybe down into the one Four fives, one four fours. If you're looking for short trades and trying to short the dollar, um, then you're looking for probably some sort of pullback into the one four nines. Maybe a bit earlier, um, maybe the top of this one four eight. Uh, if this makes a uh, a lower low, then this would create another um, supply zone. So maybe the top of here as well, the one four eight fifties. But until that does. Um, I think the really the supply zone trading opportunity would have to be at these uh, these lower lows here at the one four nine fifties. Going to the uh, dollar CAD, and um, I lost a trade on here this week. I'll explain that at the uh, at the end of the video. But I uh, the, the the CAD actually had some uh, some on the surface it looked like. Uh, good news but it was a bit mixed uh, finance real estate job cuts push up Canada's unemployment rate so uh, jobless rate in is highest in 22 months as firms reduce staff total hours worked plunged by most since early last year so Canada's labor market beat expectations with job gains but a rising unemployment rate and the drop in hours worked show mounting economic weakness especially in the finance and real estate sectors so um, there was again some positive and uh, negative news uh, for that uh, dollar K. 
tad, but uh, overall it did strengthen against the dollar on the Friday and kind of pushed back down into uh, this area here, the one uh, point. Uh, three five area round number which I think is decent for a potential uh, trade and I, I'm probably going to be getting back <clears throat> back in on this trade uh, to some degree so let's see what happens but um, but yeah so those demand zones just didn't work out there was no demand unfortunately not every single demand zone is going to work out so fundamentally again we had um, some decent news in terms of uh, GDP growth rate quarter on quarter but this had already you know this had already um, uh, was already positive but it had been revised up so that looked like it was being positive but then on the um, on the Friday we had uh, ISM manufacturing was supposed to come out at a bit higher tick a bit higher uh, uh, from uh, uh, two four point sorry four forty seven point six from forty six point seven but the uh, ISM manufacturing actually flatlined so it came out the same so uh, the market kind of readjusted. And that was seen as a bit negative or depreciative for the uh, for the dollar. So yeah, ended up uh, uh, losing uh, my last uh, trade on this one. And again, I'll break that down on the uh, at the end of the video. But going into this week, you'll see potential move here, or if you know, uh, I think if prices do come down to this one three four round number or one three three eight then I think that's actually going to be nice for a uh, a buy trade if you're looking at continued shorts uh, then because I'm not really convinced on the uh, Canadian dollar so uh, any pullbacks up into the one three sixes and even way back up into these areas here the one three sevens round number I think might be decent for a potential uh, short trade if you're looking to buy the Canadian dollar, uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Now I'm actually bullish on the New Zealand dollar based on um, some data that came out this week or the central bank matter of fact was saying that there, uh, there's the potential for a hike. So um, they're likely to hold at the next meeting, but potentially next year they could start to hike. So um, I think that uh, if the Fed actually um, are still holding then any pullbacks into a, a, a zone should be quite nice. So you can look for buy trades around here. I think the New Zealand dollar um, uh, isn't necessarily the best buy against the US dollar, but I'd look for something like the uh, New Zealand um, uh, CAD, for example. I mean, yeah, New Zealand CAD and New Zealand Euro would be a better trade for me um, in terms of uh, uh, policy divergence at the moment. But I do think that this is also quite a nice level in terms of some port of resistance in that demand zone so that's quite nice for a pullback if you are looking at um, uh, short trades and again I wouldn't necessarily buy the dollar against the New Zealand dollar um, you can look for some trades probably looking at now there is a level of uh, horizontal uh, resistance right here um, yeah, somewhere around there. So yeah, decent area to look for the potential um, a potential reversal. But I'm not really interested in, in looking at this uh, trade. And if I was, it would have to be more to the upside. Pound dollar and the pound has uh, gathered strength going into um, going into this week. There wasn't really much news uh, out of the uh, out of the UK, but it was. You know the pound's uh, strength and short-term strength has really been driven on receding rate cut bets. So the pound sterling hits new peaks against the euro and the dollar on receding rate cut bets. So um, this was driven really by not last week but the previous week's um, uh, uh, data with regards to the PMIs, and so the economy um, because the PMI uh, manufacturing came out uh, better than expected um, the market has now decided that the Bank of England are maybe not going to cut as soon as expected so you could see basically a week ago they were pricing in uh, maybe rate cuts to come in a bit sooner but 
recent data has come out after the PMIs and, and that is expected to kind of uh, be delayed a bit. And so if they're not going to cut rates as soon or as deep as um, expected, then that is actually positive and appreciates the currency as the market has to kind of revalue uh, the pound. So you'll see in the pound with negative um, uh, uh, dollar data sentiment, or dovish dollar sentiment, um, and then you've got more of repricing for the pound. That's all, that's the reason why you're seeing the pound uh, go, you know, continue to go higher. So any pullbacks into demand zones, I think, could be actually decent uh, buying opportunities if you're looking to buy the pound. Um, I'm looking to buy the pound, but again, not really against the dollar at the moment. Against other currencies uh, would be, I think. Uh, preferred but if you are a buyer of the uh, pound then um, the dollar and the pound dollar pair and that's what you trade then I think probably the path of least resistance possibly is to the upside um, but also as well just be mindful that the uh, if the if the dollar does have some decent news then this could start to reverse from where we are around uh, now pound yen um, looking for a bit more of a pullback on the pound yen um so yeah i think there was last week it made higher highs matter of fact this week so prices did pull back into that 86 uh area demand zone which also turned out to be a decent uh level of previous resistance so you know that business was being done there in terms of buying by institutions um but i am waiting for a bit more of a deeper um trade preferably uh there is a stop hunt in and around this area which i have highlighted in the members group uh which you can take but um ultimately i think the better the, the better value would be down at the a18450 so anything around here and just below i think is going to be really nice for a um for a buy trade but we could see you know um, a bit of a stop hunt around where we are now and if it does occur prices could start to go to the upside right that would be quite um quite nice but also be mindful that this could be the highs based on um a shift the potential shift in the bank of japan's um I guess uh, sentiment in terms of yield curve, moving yield curve control. If it does look like they will be, then that yen is going to be a very good trade, and that's where you probably want to look for some short trades on that on that yen. Looking at the euro uh, dollar and the euro dollar, um, I'm short on that euro, as you know. Uh, prices did, you know, kind of spike above and uh, come back down this week into this demand zone and it's found uh, it's found some uh, buying in and around here of course so um the euro didn't have a great week either um and as i said never look at just one currency in isolation traders are also betting on earlier and deeper ecb cuts as inflation slows so market fully prices in the cut in april sees more easing coming and euro inflation decelerated more than economists expected right so pretty much went over this and why that is uh, usually depreciative of a currency and that's what you're seeing now now i'm not saying that it's going to drop to the lows because if you've got two central banks where both uh uh, central banks are looking to potentially uh, cut rates soon then you may see actually the market auction in and around this area or what traders would consider ranging so um you may see something like this i'm not saying that the the, the the euro dollar is a bit of a trickier one to um to trade but i do think my bias would be more to the short side i don't think the us is um is in uh, a, i think they're in a better position matter of fact than the uh, then then Europe uh, reason main reason is because if you look at their economy and the economic growth um, again this week we've had the uh, GDP growth rate coming at five point two percent and although yes this is old bit of old data it's the most recent data from the uh, from the estimates whereas Europe on the other hand I think they are in the contraction phase so I think their their GDP is a uh, minus zero point one so buying the uh the euro when they're potentially going into a recession uh is is just not something that i'm willing to do so i do think that if i'm you know in a straight fight i 
my money would be on the uh, US dollar. So any pullbacks into a supply zone, and probably this would be now the new supply zone from here to here, is going to be where my, uh, the, the, I think the opportunity uh, to look for some downside. But um, let's see what happens there. If you are looking to buy the euro, then that's decent. Or you could look for euro. I think if the euro comes down to the 107s, 106s, that could actually be a decent area to look for uh, euro buying against the dollar. Uh, euro yen, again, um, weaker euro uh, coming out with, the, with, the, with that data. And again, isn't necessarily the strongest, but it's just the euro had some um, you know, uh, inflation data that didn't support buying of the euro. And as you previously saw, the uh, market is pricing in rate cuts. So again, there's no technical level that's gonna stand in the way of fundamentals. You know, it doesn't matter what you believe, um, you know, markets don't move based just solely off of the fact that there's a demand or supply zone or some sort of technical level. If the, if the market doesn't think that there is, uh, this is a bargain price and demand is understanding and supply is understanding where the bargain and expensive areas are, that has to be driven by either fundamentals or sentiment. And obviously uh, the uh, fundamentals are not supportive of buying here. So technically that level and that price is just not going to be uh, respected. Now, technically, this is a very nice area to look for a buy. But again, the question is, is why is the euro a buy here fundamentally? Me, personally, I'm not uh, looking for buy um, trades on here or sell trades. At the moment, I will, my bias is probably more to look for short trades in anticipation of a, uh, a yen uh, change in monetary policy. Um, so preparing for that if prices do pull back up to the 163s then i think that's going to be nice but again the data really has to support that on the yen so that's where we are uh, with the euro yen aussie dollar uh now the australian dollar is actually um in my book a buy uh, continues to be a buy although the data did come out and um uh, inflation data came out and Australia uh, says Australia's inflation calls boost in case for rate pause and the result was driven by oil price gains slowing from high levels and traders paired bets on another RBA hike up to about 50% from 70%. So it's not necessarily um, the worst thing in the world. It's a 50-50 coin flip, you know, whether uh, the uh, traders are betting the probability that the RBA will hike rates, but even if they don't hike rates uh, in the latest Westpac bank uh, um, analysis, they think that the RBA will probably hold in December or likely hold in December, but the February 2024 meeting is still live in terms of the potential for a rate hike. So um, I think any pullbacks into um, demand zones um, could be decent buying opportunities if you're bearish on that dollar, US dollar, and more bullish on the um, on the uh, Australian dollar. So any pullbacks, and in fact, I'll include this uh, this zone here as well. All right. So any pullbacks into these areas, if you want to trade this, and again, I'm buying the uh, Australian dollar, but just not against the US dollar. Not really a pair I'm looking at, but um, yeah, that's decent for a buy and these areas here if you think that um, the Australian dollar should appreciate against the US dollar. Um, Aussie uh, uh, yen, again, my bias would be more to buy uh, this currency pair, although uh, you have to acknowledge that when you zoom out that there is, uh, we are at these ultimate highs. And so buying the uh, Australian dollar at the moment uh, is, is a bit tricky against the yen. And again, um, you know, as mentioned before, if the Bank of Japan start to switch their bias in terms of uh, um, their monetary policy and implement monetary policy um, measures that are strengthening of the, uh, the yen, then in fact, this is going to be a very, very nice sell regardless of what happens with the um, uh, the bank of uh, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia, simply because even after February is over, the um, the bank are less likely to hike rates, whereas the Bank of Japan are likely to continue on their hiking cycles. So I think where we are 
I think this pair is probably done in terms of um, you'd really need to see prices move much higher then a pullback into that zone before looking at going uh, long if you are looking to go long but where we are now is quite it's quite tricky so i'd wait for prices to kind of pull back even deeper into maybe the 95 50s 90s um, 96 50s 96 round number uh, for that to be a really good opportunity of course you can look for the 97s uh, but if i'm looking to trade this i want a deeper pullback um and then finally we have gold and gold pretty much making higher highs based off of um, dollar weakness and really the headline on this is that gold uh, inches closer to record high as bets for fed pivot beef up so the precious metal has rallied more than 11 percent since october and the u.s fed preferred measure of underlying inflation data eyed so that was just before the uh, inflation came out and so gold um basically making new highs as the dollar gets weaker right so uh so yeah any pullbacks on the uh, on gold i think are potential nice buying opportunities if you have a short dollar bias so even if you don't um and, and i believe that over the next year or two as the uh, as economies all economies go into uh, their um, recession cycle and contraction cycle that, that gold will be a decent uh, is is a decent buy so any pullbacks into these areas here I think are really nice for potential buyers even if you're not necessarily trading this I think gold should be a buy um, just period right whether you're buying gold bars coins um, sovereigns Kruger rands wherever you're from maple leaves so yeah you've got uh, uh, any pullbacks into uh, these areas if you're expecting the recession cycle uh, next year in a rate cutting cycle so gold a decent buy and uh, yeah let's see what happens there so uh, that brings us to the end of the fundamental analysis and technical analysis video and let's get into the um, uh, the one winner and one loser so here we are on the uh, dollar cat again so um, basically on Friday and uh, let me just break this down let me delete all of this um, the level what I was looking for was this area here. Now, um, actually, there was a there was a trade where I got a small win, but the last trade uh, that I took was actually a uh, was a loser. But anyway, I'll get into that. So down onto the hourly, and what I saw, in fact, let me just clear this, uh, was a what I consider to be a stop hunt just before the news. So you see where you have a level, that one, and then it kind of went below it, but this area here, once I saw this, once I saw this, one sec, I thought that this was actually a decent stop hunt and it was basically taking out all the stops before the news, right? So the news came out for unemployment, uh, was supposed to come out there. And so I thought um, the market was positioning itself to close back inside this area and be a stop hunt. Now, again, at this point, nobody knows what's going to happen with the news. Um, if the news comes out worse than expected uh, for the Canadian dollar, then I, you know, I was likely to see prices go to the upside, right? So I entered at one o'clock um, and the news was at 1.30 and um again nobody knows what's going to happen with the news now in um unemployment did come out actually um as forecasted but what was kind of supportive for the canadian dollar was a bit of the uh the uh, the jobs data which i do now think that um it might not be as supportive as price is actually you know reflecting so i ended up getting into uh, a few positions on this one so uh, many of you know that I do enter into uh, three positions, right? Three or four positions. So uh, entered here, market order, then two pending orders, 50 and then 100% discount buy orders. And then the data came out and then we got a bit of a uh, contraction, right? Or say contraction, but a bit of a move down. So I entered into, I was triggered into two positions, but I was still waiting for 
didn't get out of the trade, but I'm still waiting for the uh, dollar uh, news to come out, which was ISM manufacturing. And if that was positive, then I was thinking that excellent. I would have got in at a better price or at least a couple more positions at a decent price, which would have pushed prices to the upside. And then the data came out and uh, ended up um, stopping me out, right? There it was. So actually, I think it stopped me out just before, but it would have stopped me out anyway. So that was the trade and uh, ended up losing uh, all three positions on this one. So uh, a full stop out doesn't happen often, but uh, that was just the way it went against me. Um, so that was that. Now with the uh, Aussie uh, Swiss, which was the uh, current winner at the moment, um, this was something that I put in the group and this was uh, said uh, to everyone on the first that afternoon at everyone for everyone who took the Aussie Swiss stop hunt yesterday in, uh, and this was from a, um, a chart that I posted uh, earlier. Uh, the day before, you should be in some profit if you were triggered into 50% retracement pending order. I said I've taken one to one percent, uh, one to one profit on the 50% retracement position. Now I'm swing trading the remaining position. I have also moved my stop just below the stop hunt, so to lock in further profits. So uh, let me break down that trade. And so this trade was uh, a stop hunt, and it was a level, level clear defined level. And then this was the stop hunt around here. Right, um, when prices came back inside, I decided that I wanted to uh, enter again, see if I could get into a few positions if the market gave me that, which it did. So, market the market retraced, so I entered into uh, the uh, uh, that market that that candlestick there, and then prices pulled back to 50%. So, when it done that. My stop was actually, let me just move this down again as well. My stop was 11 pips. And so when prices pulled back to this area here, right, what I did was I took a one to one, right, on the Friday, which hit my position on a Friday. Um, and then the market order, which I'm currently in, right from there. Now I can swing trade. If I'm right about this fundamentally, then we could see prices move to the upside. And I've also as well locked in some profits. So I've moved my stop loss just below uh, the potential stop hunt. Well, it looks like it's a stop hunt now. And so um, not only am I, you know, got a one-to-one -one on that, Basically, um, I'm better than a break even. So if prices pulled back now and basically stopped me out from here, um, I would have broken even at the at the very least. But because I've locked in some profits now, this is probably going to be a small profitable trade. And so yeah, that's pretty much uh, one uh, loser and one uh, winner with the potential for this to continue going to the upside if the Australian dollar does continue to. Uh, 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 appreciate against the Swiss franc and fundamentally um, the Swiss franc unless there's you know severe risk off coming into the market shouldn't want to appreciate so yeah that's one winner one loser uh, hope you have a great uh, trading week guys and I'll speak to you all next week